What's up? I'm Alex, the entrepreneur, and today I have a question from Nia Canto. He asks me how to have your filters do an AND operation instead of an OR operation. And um, basically, he goes in depth and uh, specifically shows me this endpoint with recipes, and he tries to get recipes based on ingredients, which uh, they have a, a many to many relationship with, and uh, he shows me that the results actually produce an OR in which you get uh, ingredients uh, uh, or rather recipes that contain the ingredient with rice or recipes that in, uh, contain ingredients with tuna which makes it so that it's hard to find the recipes that have both rice and tuna and so uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that specifically by overriding a controller or rather creating a new one and then I'm gonna go in depth into the uh, techniques this actually took a while like if you if you come in the Q&A you'll see that um, we had to go back and forth kind of for a while so I think there's a lot of gold in this conversation it probably will help you so first of all the problem yes the problem is here there is no end operator for this type of filter so if you filter for restaurants with a name uh, pizza and name Giovanni you're not gonna get an or rather you're not gonna get an end where you only find the name that contains pizza and Giovanni you're gonna find either a places that contain the name pizza or the places that contain Giovanni simplest way to show you and uh, what I had to do in order to help uh, Nia Canto was to literally build this setup so we're gonna create a content type called uh, um, ingredients ingredients with plural ingredients and then they're gonna have a name called ingredient that's because that's how it's called ingredients not ingredient and so this is gonna be the short text and uh, I'm gonna save and I've by the way I've run strapi with npm run develop you can use yarn develop that's okay and that way it refreshes itself next collection type I'm gonna create is called recipes and recipes will have a, a name and then I'm gonna also have a many-to-many -many relationship with ingredients okay so this is really the setup it's a very simple setup and the, the many too many relationships should set itself up already in the ingredient as well amazing so now all we got to do is set up three ingredients I'm gonna type tomato I'm gonna type uh, uh, rice and then I'm gonna type tuna so we can literally do the example and then I'm gonna have recipes I'm gonna have a rice with tuna recipe in which there's gonna be rice and tuna and then I'm gonna have a salad that has all three elements and lastly I'm gonna have a um, recipe with only tuna which I call tuna and I'll also set up one with just rice which I'll call rice So now we have four recipes, and if I make a request here, first of all, I need to uh, go in the roles and permissions and make the find public. Find, uh, this is the wrong one, ingredients, find, find one, recipes, find and find one. Boom. Then next up, I can go here and make a request, HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 1337 slash recipes, and then I can literally copy the parameters that he made. Recipes with a question mark, and the question mark will ask about riz, but I'll change it to rice. And fun will be tuna. And I expect to get uh, uh, most likely four results. So let's see what we get. I get one result, two results, three results, four. Okay, so I'm clearly getting an or because I'm getting the tuna and the rice, which I'm not supposed to be getting. I'm supposed to get only the ones where they, they are both there. So how do we go about solving this? Well, we're gonna create a custom controller. So first of all, let's look at the normal controller, which is this one, it's called find. And find will basically uh, search or find them with uh, a service is called find, and it will return all of them. So basically the reason why uh, this gets a little complicated and why the solution is not the best, the solution I'm gonna propose is not necessarily the best in terms of performance, is because if you go deeper, you will see that this service is basically just an extension of a, of the of how the database layer works. And so, in a way, even at the database level, uh, we still have an OR operation. And I kind of wasn't able to find a specific way to get an end. So, if you know of a way to use Strapi.query to actually do that, 
uh, I definitely want to see that, so let me know. But I'm going to show you the simplest way that makes a lot of sense and I'm going to guide you through all of it. At the end of the day, once we get the entities, we just need to sanitize them to return them. That's the extra part that our controller has to do. So we're going to create a custom controller. Let's go in our recipes, controllers, and we see that there's nothing here. I'm going to create a new controller and I'm going to call it find end. So it's going to be async find end right ctx which we're going to receive the ctx specifically we're going to receive the ctx.query which we still need okay and i can just do console.log find end ctx.query just to see what we get okay and uh, this will return a, a 404 when we do but first of all well, we created our custom controller here we need to map it to a route so let's go in config routes.json and then i'm just gonna copy this find here and paste it below and instead of recipes I'll just put recipes slash end and I'll call the handler recipes dot find end okay so it's uh, mapping to the name that we add here on our controller so now I need to make it public I can go in the strapi roles click on public and then I'll find the find end click here and save it's now public and if I make a request this is the old request I'm gonna comment T and copy but then I'll make recipes slash end okay that's the only change now if I open up the terminal I should see my console.log which I do and down here I see find and ctx.query ingredients dot ingredients end so this is also why this solution is not really uh, the best but uh, basically with this key it's gonna be a key that we're gonna keep in mind and we're gonna be looping through it. So this is kind of a custom solution that works with this specific request in which we make this request. Uh, if you want to use a different type of uh, filter, you're going to have to adapt your code. So more specifically, what we're going to do here is we're going to get all of the recipes. So const all recipes list, because it's going to be a bunch of lists of recipes, is going to be equal to await, and then we're going to ctx.query square bracket this filter right here so I'm just gonna copy it square bracket the name of the filter it needs to be in, in quotes because it's a weird name uh, and having the dot will crush it but this is gonna be a list which means that we can dot map on it and then we're gonna have an asynchronous function which will get one ingredient so we're gonna have an ingredient name as a parameter and given an ingredient what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all the recipes so const recipes equals to await strapi dot services dot the name of the recipes the name of the uh, controller recipes dot find and we're gonna find the ones that use this filter again we're gonna use the same filter boom which needs to be named with uh, uh, single quotes or double quotes it needs to be escaped and then it needs to have that specific ingredient so this is gonna basically iterate all over all of them. And last thing we need to do here is promise.all so that uh, we can um, receive back the promise and wait for it until it's done. And now we should be able to get a list of, of recipes that contains, each list contains the specific uh, uh, list, uh, the specific recipes that belong to one ingredient. So basically, if we were to return the unique elements from this, we basically will return the or so uh, at this point we're still not done but I just want to show you what we get we basically get uh, uh, actually we still get a promise so probably I uh, did something wrong yeah I need to return the recipes here okay so now that should work still looks broken so maybe I'm missing something await uh, I think uh, oh, I need to await this okay so uh, I made a mistake here I need to await the promise.all of the map which uh, has an asynchronous function which awaits and returns the promise so that, that way I resolve this promise with promise.all or actually I resolve the loop of promises all of them and then I put them in a list and then I wait for all of the promises to be done and I show them so that's what's gonna happen and this is actually very useful whenever you need to wait for a bunch of operations although it's not the most uh, effective in terms of performance but there you go I basically get one list that has to do with the rice which is this one and one list that has to do with the tuna okay so if I look at the intersection between these 
by looking at the IDs, I only want to get the ID 1 and the ID 2. And this is actually the part that is the most complicated in my experience, because we basically have to use Lodash, which is an amazing library, but we have to actually understand why it behaves the way it behaves. The method we're going to use is called intersection with, and intersection with will take a, a bunch of arrays, and it will use a, comp a comparator, like a function that compares them. So the problem you would have is that if you feed this list of lists in here, it will actually not work. I'm not sure if that's a bug, I'm not sure if that's a feature, but basically uh, it wouldn't work. Uh, so in order to show you a code that scales, we're actually going to use the reduce. So basically we're going to, it's actually gonna be really cool. So first of all, let's quickly, no, let's just do that. So const unique, or rather uh, const intersection is gonna be equal to all recipes list dot reduce, and then we're going to receive in our reduce, we're going to receive the accumulator. And then we're going to have the, the value, the list. And then with each list, we're going to use lodash, which is typically typed as underscore, dot, and we call this method intersection with, intersection with between the accumulator and the list. And the function for which we're going to compare them is going to be the, uh, basically we're going to receive an element and the element is going to be compared by using, uh, actually we receive two parameters, it's going to be, um, let's call it um, first and second, because we have to compare two elements, and basically we're going to type first.id, triple equal to second.id. They need to be the same, and uh, this wouldn't work because the accumulator would be an empty element, but this will work if we add as a default value, we can add the all recipes list square bracket zero. So if we add the first array as the first default value, the first intersection will be with itself, which means that it will return itself, and then it's gonna reduce, i.e. iterate over all of them, and make sure that only the elements that are shared between all of the arrays will be returned. The last thing we need to do, well, first of all, I didn't import Lodash, so I'm gonna have to type const underscore equals require of Lodash, and then the last thing we can do, just, just for now, we're just going to console the logged intersection, just to see what we get back, and then we're going to sanitize it by looking at the Strapi documentation. So I'm just going to show you what the intersection looks like, and we expect to find the element with ID of 1 and 2. Let's see if that's the case, command K, and let's make the request. The intersection looks correct. I'm going to change the order between tuna and rice, because if there was some sort of bug, changing the order would actually change the result but it looks like it does not. It does not, so it's amazing. So at this point, all we have to do is return, just like Strapi teaches us in the core controller, which uh, requires us to import sanitize entity from Strapi utils. So let me do that. Const curly braces sanitize entity equal require of Strapi dash utils, which you may not have. So if you get an exception once you run this, Make sure to npm i strapi dash utils because you may not have it. Not, not all installs use it. And then the last thing we need to do is just copy this method here, the, um, the sanitization, which will basically return the mapping of the intersection in this case. And for each of them, it's just going to call sanitize entity with the model. And you need to ob ob obviously adapt the model. The model name in this case is recipes. So I'll just call it recipes and I'm gonna be good to go. So now I can actually just make my request and I will get one element and I will get a second element and this is actually the intersection of the elements, which means that it's the end operator instead of using the or operator. So thanks to Nia Kanto for asking the question. I hope this provided a lot of uh, educational value to you and have an amazing day.